Yep, that's it. One single paragraph, that's it. That's all it has on the subject of wiring feathers. And it doesn't go into detail about how to do it. I just really don't understand it because milliners have used wire to strengthen and control feathers for centuries. They understand how beneficial it is to have that additional strength and control that wire provides. It strengthens and protects the feather and you can even fix a broken feather with wire. It allows you to create more intricate shapes that just aren't possible with regular shaping methods. And it opens up possibilities to create even more stunning arrangements for your hat. So keep on watching because I'm going to show you two methods for wiring your feathers in order to open up more possibilities and empower you to artfully decorate your hat and impress everyone around you. Now for both of these methods, you do want to start by removing any of the barbs that are at the bottom of the shaft. I like to leave about an inch and a half to two inches clear of any sort of feather barbs. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to prepare your thread and you're going to do this by cutting a piece that's long enough for the method that you're using as well as the size of the feather. And make sure you're using a strong thread. I personally like to use this Bakken's linen thread. I will usually use either a 35 2 or on some of the lighter, smaller feathers, I will jump up to a 60 slash two. A quick word about the Bakken's, uh, it's my favorite thread and it has been for a long while. And I like it so much that we ended up sourcing it so that we could carry it in our Etsy shop. So I'm gonna put a link in the description box if you're interested in supporting us by buying some thread from us. So once you've cut your thread, you want to go ahead and give it a really good coating of beeswax. And this time, unlike usual, I don't want you to heat set it. And the reason is that the stickiness of the beeswax makes the thread a lot easier to handle as you're working with it. So the beeswax is actually optional, but it really does help. You want both the thread and the wire to match your feather. This is number 19 rayon wrapped millinery wire. And the reason I like to use it because you can use a fabric pen or a Sharpie to color it in and it does a fantastic job. It really does take the color really well. So that's why I prefer to use that. This is another optional step, but it's something that I like to do for added security. I like to take a little dab of glue and add it to my knots. I also like to add it to the cut end of my wire to prevent that rayon from unraveling from the wire. So let's move on to the actual methods for attachment. So for this one, you're going to be sewing the wire directly to the feather. So it's really useful to have a feather board because that helps control the feather barbs while you're busy controlling the thread. Because <laughs> believe me, you're going to need that extra added control. I will put a link in the description below. The first thing you want to do is decide how far up your feather you want the wire to go. You do not want it to go all the way to the tip because you want to re retain the freedom for that tip to fall in a loose, soft manner because that's what gives it that natural look. So measure the shaft from the tip up to the point where you want it to end. Add two inches to that number and then you a piece of wire to that length. Now, since the wire has been on a roll, you're going to want to straighten it out as much as you can and to be as straight as possible. Then you'll place the wire in on the least conspicuous side feather and make sure you leave the two inches that we added to the wire length to hang over the edge of the shaft and then you're going to secure it by wrapping your thread around it using the wrap method that we cover next and once that's done you can go ahead and secure your feather into your feather board so prepare another thread like we mentioned earlier in the video and then you'll secure the thread to the shaft at the bottom of the bar i do this by making a knot at the end but i don't pull the knot closed wrap the thread around the shaft of the feather and then into the knot and then I pull the knot tight. You can also wrap it around a couple of times for a little extra added security and to kind of hold everything into place. Next you'll begin the stitch. Let's go to the tutorial cam for a close-up on how to do this stitch. Imagine if you will this is the feather shaft and this is the thread I'm using to sew the wire to the feather and this is also used to sew two feathers together. So what I do is I bring the thread up and I'm going to kind of let it hang over the edge of the shaft of my feather. I'll go to the back of the feather 
and I'm gonna come back up from behind. And when I do that, I'm making sure that I'm going between the shaft and into the loop of the thread. And then I'll just pull that through and pull it snug like that. It's that simple. Again, around the back, coming up through the loop. And that is a millinery wiring stitch. Use this stitch and continue up the shaft in this manner until you reach the end of the wire. So this method is great for fixing broken feathers or for holding a feather to a shape that it just can't hold on its own. And once you've reached the end of the wire, tie the wire thread off in the usual manner. And for extra added security, I do like to add a little dab of glue right on those knots. So if you haven't colored in your wire yet, go ahead and do that now. And that's what I love about the millinery wire is that it really takes the color of the marker really well. Also, if you ha don't have a thread that matches, you can use a, you wanna make sure you're sure you're using a natural fiber. So either rayon or linen or cotton white thread and you can color that in as well. And here we have our finished wired feather and you can begin shaping it by bending the wire in your desired shape. Once you've cleared the shaft, go ahead and cut a piece of wire that's approximately three inches or more in length. The important thing is you want a piece of wire that will have two inches hanging off the end of the shaft and you want it to overlap the shaft by an inch to two inches. Place the wire at the back of the shaft, then take your prepared thread and you're gonna hold it against the shaft and you wanna leave a tail at the end about an inch or so long. So it's also going to hang over with the, the wire. So you, you'll have two inches of wire overhanging and about an inch or more of thread overhanging. Then I like to wrap the thread tail around the wire just to keep it out of the way. And let's go to the tutorial cam for a better look at how we start out. I'm going to leave my tail, come up, just above where I want it to be, and then I'm gonna make a loop, and then I'm gonna come back down to the bottom. And then from the bottom, I'm going to do, I'm gonna catch that thread into, I'm gonna lock it basically using that millinery stitch from before. That locks it in nicely. Now keeping that out of the way, And now I am ready to wrap. Continue to wrap until you have covered the entire piece of wire. As you're wrapping, make sure that your thread sits nicely against your previous wrap. I know this seems like it would take forever, but it actually goes faster than you would think. And it's just a wonderful method for keeping that wire attached to your feather. So while I'm wrapping, let's talk about why you would be using this method. I found this to be useful when I have a strong feather that I want to arrange in a way that requires it to stand away from the hat or where I'm not using the hat as the support or even straight up. If you want your feather to stand straight up, this is a great method for that. But it's also for feathers that don't need the additional support that goes all the way up the shaft. And now that I've reached the end of the shaft, let's go back to the tutorial cam to see how to finish it off. I'm going to take the end I've been looping with and I'm going to stick it through the loop that I left at the start. I just wanna be careful to kind of keep everything really nice and close and tight. So then I'm going to go down to the tail that I left at the very beginning. I'm gonna pull that and you'll see, if you watch closely, you'll see that this causes the loop to pull down. And what I've done now is I've got this ending thread caught in there. So I'm gonna hold everything together and pull it until it's sitting about halfway through. And then you can go ahead and cut this end off. 
And then with this end, I like to give get a little more insurance. I will come back around and just do a quick knot. To go through twice. off and there you have it and as before you can do the optional step of placing some glue at that knot next you'll want to bend the wire at the bottom of your shaft the angle and the direction will be determined by what you want your arrangement to be and then in order to give it even more stability you're going to fold it back into a u-shape and the next step is to shape it and attach it to your hat and this video shows you how